Welcome back, everybody. Uh, now comes one of our main parts of the session today, which will be we'll have our uh, exciting Israeli fintech companies sharing about their uh, companies and their solutions to you. Uh, each of them will have five minutes, and I will be giving them a one-minute heads up uh, as in one uh, as in when we reach four minutes. So please keep to your time so that we can have the others present and continue the discussion in the networking lounge post the presentations. So starting off, we'll have our uh, a senior sales director at Curve presenting about Curve. Or stage is yours. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Um, so I'm going to present for five minutes. It's going to be very challenging to uh, squeeze Curve's speech for five minutes, but uh, let's try to do our best. And I hope to see you in our um, a table later. So Curve is uh, as an Israeli cybersecurity company when we are focusing on the full stack of digital asset security solution for financial institutions. Uh, you can see that we have customers from the traditional uh, financial institutions like uh, Swissburg or BNP uh, Paribas, the uh, French bank, uh, Franklin Templeton, and a lot in the cryptocurrency uh, world like uh, uh, major exchanges, um, a trading platform, OTCs, uh, from all around the range. We are supporting the major tokens and coins that they exist today in the market. And uh, one of the, our major advantages is that we are supporting, we are providing uh, cryptocurrency wallets, A to Z, the solution, uh, maintaining your private keys, um, um, protecting the transaction over blockchain and, and the full platform support all the range of the solutions that you need. Uh, and we are supporting, we are providing uh, uh, insured wallets. This is one of our main advantages. In our investors, you can also see names like uh, from the cryptocurrency aspect as well as the cybersecurity. I will try to explain what we are doing by uh, speak a bit about the challenge that uh, financial institutions are facing uh, when it comes to cryptocurrency and then how we are solving it. So the challenges, I'm sure everyone have heard about the stories every like a month or two months, the story has been released to the news on how someone lost his private key or some exchange got hacked or all kind of stories that happened. Um, uh, uh, an owner that passed away together with his key and all of the customers in the exchange lost their funds. So there are stories all around of how in the cryptocurrency world, people are losing millions of dollars every year. Uh, the situation today is that every company that's trying to get into this world are protecting themselves, usually when, it, when they're thinking on cyber attacks, on a hacker that comes and trying to steal their funds. The reality is that almost half of these cases are happening because of errors, open, operational uh, mistakes, or inside threats. Curve has come with a solution that can protect from all. Um, the trade of that organization, banks or custodians are, are facing is the fact that they want to protect their customers' funds in the most secure way, but as well, they want to give them a high level of usability. Usually, it's kind of a trade-off that you need to make. It's either you're having the, the highest level of security, like a cold storage, or you're giving a very uh, good usability without having uh, the maximum security. Curve is coming with a solution that is based on multi-party computing, which we don't have the time to get into what it is, but it's basically a field in mathematics that allows us to take the private key and eliminate the risk of having a private key. So we don't have a private key in his entire form in any part of his life cycle. We are splitting the private keys which every participant are holding only a share of a key. By having only a share of a key, we eliminate the risk of someone get the key, lose the key, or compromise the key in some way. So we are a SaaS solution, uh, providing you access to our platform. We are maintaining everything for you from A to Z, uh, the blockchain nodes, the uh, full platform is maintaining by us, uh, you are getting a share of a key while Curve is holding a share of a key as well. So in order to hack your platform, it needs to be 
help, uh, needs to hack Curve and your system at the same time, which is impossible. Um, we are protecting the transaction using MPC protocols. So again, the keys are never combined together when we are signing um, the transaction. I think it means that my time is uh, off. So I'll just uh, summarize that we don't have one single point of failure in any part of the uh, process. We, you can uh, use our software using our GUI or API connectivity, uh, and we are asset agnostic and support almost every use case uh, there is in the cryptocurrency aspect. So this is it. Thank you all, and thanks for sticking to the time. Uh, really appreciate it. Now uh, we will have uh, Giran from uh, Curve talking about uh, their product. Giran? So again, hello, everybody. The name of the company is FinCom. We saw Curve before. Um, fin that's, a, that's perfectly fine. So again, five minutes, and it's a short time. Um, FinCom is a high um, deep tech uh, technology that enables to match databases across different languages, 38 languages, including Chinese, Russian, Arabic, uh, English, without needing to translate from one to another. This is primarily used for database uh, um, unification, matching, and searching. Uh, the way we're doing it, we're using computational linguistics together with advanced phonetics, mathematics, machine learning, and AI. Um, to put it in a simple manner, today, every sort of writing, you will have a different result. So if somebody not being a fraudster just wrote a name differently in a database, that will be a duplication. To give you how big of a problem it is, Microsoft actually states that 7% of all its worldwide licenses, billions of dollars, are simply ghost, duplications of spelling mistakes. They say this in their yearly filings to the stock exchange. Our capability is a breakthrough in the phonetics, in mathematical phonetics, and it's the ability to have a single representation to every way of writing, because we no longer look at the letters, we're listening to the sounds, the phenom, and that's our little trick. The company has a patented, granted patent in the US and patent pendings in um, different jurisdictions around the world. Today, this technology is being used for anti-money laundering in various areas, such as name screening for transaction, KYC, and ongoing. Yet it can also be used very successfully as we're seeing in Homeland Security and other areas. One of the big, big results that we're showing with a financial institution is the reduction in the false positive rate. We're showing a huge reduction from current solutions of anywhere between 50 to 67%. These are real numbers. Um, most importantly, since we're looking all the time at not missing anything, we're actually showing that current solutions, as we know, do miss in anti-money laundering, and we're showing their 13% miss rate that we do find. Um, these misses, of course, uh, are generating huge fines. Um, in the world of anti-money laundering, we know financial institutions around the world have been fined over $350 billion in the last decade, decade itself. But the operational cost for name screening is growing all the time, especially when the regulator is reducing um, the level of the, the threshold. As we see in the US now, any transaction from $250 needs to be screened as just a month ago was $3,000. Um, various, uh, various tier one financial institutions we've tested, we show anywhere between 90% um, you know, to 200% improvements. We have um, different solutions out in the market uh, from database unification to transaction screening, but there's one solution that I really want to push and, 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 and tell you guys about because we're very, very proud of it. And it's right now being deployed into two tier one financial institutions in parallel. And what we're doing is the L1, L2 automation. We call it IPA, Intelligent Processing Automation. The L1, level one, and level two of compliance operation takes 770 seconds at a tier one financial institution. We're able to reduce that by 96%. The costs are, are huge, 
and it's causing and and the numbers are just growing um, year in year out. Just to give you an example, the integration is a bolt on. We're not telling anybody to change anything. What we're coming around is just if causing a great efficiency and optimization to current ways of working. Um, we place, reduce false positive, and ensure no misses. We've worked with numerous different um, leading professionals around the world. Uh, regulators are using us as a model validation, our technology, and we're hoping to find ourselves into the APAC region. Of course, Hong Kong being a huge bridge into that region. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, uh, Gideon. Next, we will have uh, Ryan Bassable from uh, Glassbox presenting. Ryan, would you could you share your screen, please? Okay, fine. I think I'm going to leave it here because I think when I push present before, yeah. um, somehow you weren't able to see it. But let's begin. Okay, so so Glassbox. Um, for those of you that don't know, it's not a fintech company, but it's actually helping many fintechs and tier one financial institutions as well as travel and retail, and you'll see exactly why. What it's about is creating a frictionless digital journey for your customers by quickly and accurately answering the questions which are at the core of your business. Just a brief understanding of what the company actually is about. It's a 10-year-old company with offices across New York, London, and Israel, uh, about 300 employees, about 60% of those are R&D making sure that the technology itself is robust and future-proof. This is a quick slide just showing you who we're working with. And why this is relevant is because it denotes two things. Number one is that each and every single one of these logos or companies over here have exactly what you have as their best interests in mind, which is that your customer is not just a session ID. Your customer is a human being. They're engaging in your platform, in your product, and they want, to be, they want to be able to have an experience that is intuitive, that they believe understands them, their needs, what their objectives are, and what they're trying to achieve. So all of these companies have that in mind. And also what they uh, are struggling with, and I'll say is a similar pain, is that with a bricks and mortar store, it's very easy to understand your customer. He walks into the store, he looks around at the product and you can quickly identify whether he's really genuinely interested in the product or he's just browsing or window shopping. And also if he's looking for something and he can't find it, immediately a salesperson would engage and say, can I help you? Um, and even be able to present them with, you know, a, an, an offer or something that might keep them more engaged. But in the digital space, all you see is a tap on an app a finger tap on an app or a scroll or a pinch or a swipe or in the case of the web it's just a mouse that's scrolling you have no visibility into the actual um, feelings that are going on and the behavior that's going on so glassbox is giving you transparency into that conduct into that behavior and um, we can explain that a little bit more in, a, in more of a technical demo which is not going to be happening right now obviously the big question that comes up is if we are doing uh, what's called session replay and capturing 100% of your customers' interactions and engagement, PCI, PII, all of those data issues come up. But because you, as you saw before, we're working with companies that have security as their first and foremost priority, we check all those boxes. So there's no issue around security whatsoever. The big questions that are always kind of asked are things like, um, you know, how do I go about quickly identifying technical issues, creating error reduction in my, my customer's experience? How can I ensure that my NPS score is high and the customer feedback is something that's showing support and, and, and positivity? Also, that my intended conversion rates are growing quarter over quarter, year over year, and that loyalty remains. These are the very KPIs and the questions that Glassbox is helping uh, these companies answer because this is what's first and foremost important without a customer you don't really have a product that's be that's relevant excuse the slide over here with all the animations but basically the solution itself breaks it down into four different sections one as I mentioned is capturing 100% of your customers behavior and engagement 
that is then indexed and analyzed to be able to present to you out of the box reports and dashboards, which you can then visualize and happily prioritize where the issues are that need to be fixed, which leads to an ultimate uptick in your customer satisfaction and the revenue there. I'm just gonna quickly jump to um, this last slide over here before I finish. Um, What's really important and key to understand is when we talk about tagless capturing, many of you might be using analytical solutions that you have to go through an onerous process to be able to understand how your customers are engaging by tagging different elements on the pages. The problem with that is that you are only really identifying for yourself what you believe to be key elements, but there might be something that you're missing. And I'll give you a, quick, a clear example of that shortly. Imagine, for example, one of the customers we just brought on board was Hong Kong Jockey Club. Now imagine you go over to Hong Kong Jockey Club, you, you wanna go place a bet on a horse, right? So they're able to track you in terms of getting into your vehicle and arriving at the parking, at the parking bay. They're able to track you walking into the actual stadium itself. They're able to track you walking into and standing into the line. But then there's a question is, why didn't you place your bet? Why did you drop off? Why did you abandon your process or your transaction? And what they didn't see is that the person standing behind you actually spilt his beer all over you. And that's created a very unsatisfactory customer experience. What happens is you go home, you abandon your journey, but everything else looked good. From a server side perspective, everything was working perfectly fine. From a custom experience side perspective and tagging, all of those those check boxes were ticked, but you couldn't see the beer that spilt over you. And that's where Glassbox comes in. It explains the why behind the journey abandonment, it explains the why behind the error or that needs to be fixed. It's not just simply about showing you what happened, but explaining the why. So um, I think that's all I really have at this time, but obviously I'm happy to engage with people later. Thank you, Ryan. Uh Next up, we'll have Tom Boltman from uh, Cover talking about their company. Thank you very much. Currently in the world, billions of dollars of millions of companies have their balance sheets threatened by catastrophic losses caused by a cyber event. There are so many examples of just how perilous the situation is today. One example, is a revelation last year that an operating system called VxWorks, which sits behind billions of IoT devices, which control nuclear power stations, oil and gas rigs, manufacturing lines, and more, are threatened by multiple critical vulnerabilities that could enable a malicious attacker to take control of those devices and cause mass devastation. The entire fabric of the international economy is controlled by these devices and the devastation could be immense. Another example was the warning by the head of the ECB, the European Central Bank, Christine Lagarde, that said a cyber, a cyber event could cause a liquidity crisis of hundreds of billions of dollars. And what's more fascinating about what she said was that it would only need to affect a single major bank for that to happen. And just a few weeks ago, we saw how even the most protected, the most important institutions that control the world's largest economy could be penetrated and could be exploited. And what's even more scary is that it could take years to really understand what happened and whether or not those networks and those institutions are still threatened. Today, we live in a world where there are single points of failure and massively distributed technologies which could undermine the success and even the solvency of a company or a portfolio of companies. At Cover, we enable decision makers to financially quantify their cyber risk so that they can make better decisions, so that they can prioritize resources, and so that they can make the most informed decision to make sure that they are managing their risk properly. 
We serve today two core sets of customers. Primarily, we've been focused up until now on the insurance and reinsurance market, where we are serving uh, reinsurance and reinsurance carriers with tens, and bi tens of billions of exposed cyber risk. We provide solutions for underwriting, and we provide expo uh, solutions for exposure management. And each of these are different, and I'll talk to you why cyber risk is a complex beast and how we break it down using data science to understand and create solutions for every part of the risk. One example is the difference between a small company and a large company. Just to understand the risk that one or the other are exposed to requires a different uh, process of analysis. For example, with a larger company, you have to factor in all of the subsidiary entities, operational units that they serve, and you need to do it very fast. With an, with an SMB, you need to analyze it in seconds because an underwriter would not be allocated to it. So you need to provide automated solutions. And with an exposure management, which is perhaps uh, you know one of our most powerful products that we have, you need to be able to serve insurance carriers and reinsurance carriers um, and help them understand what are the cascading ca cyber catastrophes which could affect them and explain to them what drive those things and allow them to assess and reassess in a very fast manner. And soon we can launch a product for the enterprise risk management space which helps large enterprises financially quantify their cyber risks. And even the last week, the beta customers that we are talking to, just five last week, had $100 billion in revenue that they needed to protect. So the, 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 the threat is immense and people are understanding it. And that's what we provide. We provide solutions to help them financially quantify their cyber risk. There's a number of reasons that we have advantages that help us deliver these solutions. We have a phenomenal team of people who span both the military intelligence and commercial and, in, and insurance uh, disciplines. We create multiple methodologies and multiple risk models, which analyze the risk and break it down. We have very powerful automated data enrichment capabilities, especially in insurance and in reinsurance, where data is often missing or not available. You need to be able to accurately create an alternative. And also the ability to use data science to provide data for every parameter and move beyond the actuarial processes that have dominated the past. I'll give you an example of some of the methodologies that we use, but ultimately there are different types of cyber risk. Some are low frequency and high frequency, but low severity. Some such as the large loss can be more infrequent, but if they happen could be devastating and they tend to be uh, personified by a targeted attack. And then there are events like Not Petty and WannaCry, which what we call a cyber catastrophe, which can affect a single business at a single point in time. And the question is, how do you use data? To, how do you understand what data you need to understand that can cause these cyber catastrophes, as an example? And I'll give you an example. Um, two years ago, there was an example where millions of Dell laptops were vulnerable to remote code execution, allowing a malicious attacker to take control of the computer. And you would think that millions of Dell laptops that could be Tom, you'll need to wrap up by quite quickly after uh, this example. No problem. Um, it would be a cyber catastrophe. However, it's not. And the reason it's not is because it lacks a virality factor, meaning it, it lacks the ability to be um, uh, or have an automated, uh, no human in the loop attack. And ultimately, what we learned was that there are two things you need to understand, technologies and service providers, that 80% of the time, technologies are responsible for them. And those include operating systems, databases. These are the points where you have to track from the point of underwriting through to exposure or manage them within an enterprise. And because of that, you'll know what the impact is of these events. So you can uh, allocate the resources and we will financially quantify that. Just to, so you can see, just to wrap up here, Here's an example of just how different different companies uh, are using different technologies in different parts of the world. They're not ubiquitous, they're very different. And part of the solutions that we provide is to uh, help our customers understand what those differences are, how they apply to their risk specifically, and then how they can make better decisions. For more information, please join us at our table or you can uh, reach out via email as well. Thank you. Thank you very much, Tom. Now I'll invite on stage uh, Dolan Blitz, a VP Strategy at Personetix to sh share about Personetix. So hi everybody, nice to meet you. Uh, I'm Dovel Blitz, I'm VP Strategy and Business Development at Personetix. 
uh, Personetics. We are a 10 years old uh, growth fintech company uh, with over 220 employees in 10 global offices. We are backed by some of the world's largest VCs and also several banks invested in the company. Personetics is a global category leader in the space of data-driven personalization and customer engagement for financial services. We are in production with over 55 global top-tier banks all over the world and growing quite fast. And basically what we are doing is providing a white label personalized engagement platform that really leverage the biggest asset of banks. We're helping banks to actually use their own customers' financial transactional data in order to quickly drive a significant business impact and market differentiation with their own clients. We are helping banks to become much more smart, proactive, and knowledgeable with their clients and drive a high value, personalized, day-to-day -day engagement that leads into a deep and quick business impact. We as a company are dealing with AI analytics. So we are accessing the bank's own financial transactional data that can be stored in any kind of places, uh, databases or data warehouse. We know how to use our own over three dozen of proprietary and patent protected AI machine learning models to deeply provide a real time financial map of your customers to understand their financial behavior, past, present and predict the future. We are also working with uh, financial data aggregators as a part of the open banking. Once we are deeply understanding, categorizing, enriching, understanding cash flow, patterns, and anomalies of each one of your customers, we are able to quickly deploy through your own digital channels over 300 of personalized day-to-day -day alerts, recommendations, banking insights, product-based advice, even automated financial wellness programs to drive a high personalized proactive engagement between the banks and their own customers and to increase their day-to-day -day trust, to help customers to better manage their financial life, to stay on top of their finance, to boost their financial wellness and to increase their openness and receptiveness to a product-based advice. So we are focusing on the ability to quickly drive a significant business impact and market differentiation. We are also providing a codeless creation and management console so our clients will be able to modify all the existing content by themselves and even create new capabilities, new content. They can simulate or segmentize or change triggers, dependencies or logic. We are complementing internal capabilities and helping banks to really address their customers' real-time needs. We are becoming, with our solutions, with our platform, a global market standard and the ability of banks to harness their own data, their own customers' biggest goldmine, the financial data, to drive an ongoing personalized touch with their customers, becoming this real-time financial advisor, helping customers with their day-to-day, -day, providing a real-time financial data-driven, personalized, product-based advice, even providing autonomous banking, the ability of banks to even think and act in behalf of their customers, this is the trajectory in the market and we are seeing it all over the world. We are already active in Hong Kong with several clients and we would love to also collaborate with you. This is an example from UOB, the third largest bank in Southeast Asia. And we have done several implementations with this bank in Singapore, in Thailand, Indonesia, Malaysia, and we are keep growing, including their own mobile digital bank and the regular bank. And we were able in less than six months of implementation to reach these great capabilities, to quadruple customer engagement scores, to touch the customers at least eight times a month with personalized high touch of insights, alerts, and recommendations, to increase by 50% the click-through rates on the personalized insights, including product-based advice, including a chatbot and the push notifications. 25% of these highly engaged customers are now performing at least four financial transactions a month. So we are able to quickly monetize the value and really drive a high conversion rates in digital sales and services. Another example from Australia, my state bank from Australia, a combination of day-to-day -day personalized insights, alerts, recommendations, and even an automated financial wellness programs, helping customers to automatically save for the future they don't need to set up goals or threshold or time limit. 
completely automated, self-adjustable. That's the next reality in digital banking, the ability of banks to think and act in the help of their customers. Customers can always pause and stop, but it's completely automated and self-adjustable. We have the same progress, we have the same program for investments or debt reduction. So that's the autonomous banking, ability to also identify customers' needs, to recommend a solution. The bank is taking a bolder approach, helping customers to success, saving, cut addiction. We are always protecting the customers and continuous improvement. So before I'm finishing, that's the virtuous customer flywheel that we are providing. By better understanding the customer's financial behavior, we are able to increase the time engagement with NPS to connect with backend products and services of the bank, provide a cost and conversion rate. By providing automated programs, we are keep driving those kind of capabilities, helping customers to automatically achieve their own financial goals. Cosmetics provides a full end to end strategic, personalized, engagement platform. Data, categorizing, reaching on the local market, providing rich content out of the box, foodless, creation and management tools, automated, self serving services, and personal analytics tools. Last slide, we are focusing on our ability to drive a key business outcome with our clients and really drive a significant market depreciation and business impact. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dora. Next up, we will have uh, Yanev from uh, West2 present. Yanev, would you like to share your screen, please? Yeah. Yeah, please. Sorry for the inconvenience. Hi, everybody. My name is Yaniv Vertele. I'm uh, the CEO and one of the co-founders of West2. West2 is an Israeli tech company um, leveraging artificial intelligence technology to transfer risks from the insurance market to the capital markets providing an alternative to uh, traditional reinsurance, where our uh, outline goal is to bring the insurance space and the capital markets closer together, creating an affordable, flexible, and complementary alternative to traditional reinsurance uh, to the insurance industry and on the capital markets end, providing investors, institutionals, uh, pension schemes, et cetera, with the ability to invest in uncorrelated investment opportunities. Uh, in terms of background, uh, the industry is facing tremendous stress uh, in terms of increased liabilities and balance sheets uh, retained capital. Both non-life and life insurers are uh, in various domains exposed to uh, higher regulation, uh, all in all in uh, tremendously low capacity of traditional reinsurance against the uh, rising uh, capital demands, uh, there's a lack of capacity on the traditional reinsurance in various areas, and this is exactly where Vestu comes in, complementing the traditional reinsurance industry by providing a one-stop shop solution that enables the risk transfer of the books of the sedents. Uh, those could be various insurers from the life and uh, PNC domain through a financial instrument that we are structuring over to the capital markets. Best to start by structuring a risk model associated with each and one of the uh, data points of decedents of the specific portfolio. Once the portfolio is fully modeled, uh, we translate the risk to financial uh, perspective, uh, embed it into a financial instrument, and uh, finally place it with the capital markets. Our customers are insurance companies, um, some of which are also reinsurance companies currently operating both in the US, uh, Europe and in Israel, um, where we act as a one-stop shop. On one end, working with the student to understand their needs to transfer the risk, uh, and on the other, uh, bringing on board the capital markets, uh, various players in order to uh, place these instruments with them. The risk transfer from the insurance industry to the capital markets is fully regulatory compliant, both in terms of NAIC and Solvency II regulation. And Basel III obviously allows each and one of the banks to buy into those uh, uncorrelated investment opportunities. Um, our secret source is based on artificial intelligence uh, suite that enables us to very swiftly, quickly um, to price uh, and project very accurately 
the uh, insurance risk, eventually providing the student with a very flexible solution and a fast time to market in terms of placing this risk with the capital markets, uh, complementing traditional reinsurance or replacing it fully. The company has been uh, active uh, for almost three years, uh, validated by uh, external third-party entities such as Milliman and S&P, uh, currently working with the largest brokers of uh, traditional reinsurance, starting with Guy Carpenter through Stony Brook and Multistrat, uh, strong collaborations uh, with Citibank uh, and IBM. Today, we can offer each and one of the uh, seedants and insurance companies that we're working with a uh, risk transfer of their books to the capital markets, uh, and as such, enabling a full regulatory compliant uh, complementary or replacing alternative uh, to additional risk. Uh, our uh, undergoing into a fully digital uh, creating a um, in a couple of months from now, a fully blown marketplace where students and uh, investors could transact directly on those uh, risks, uh, eventually creating a broad marketplace that would be accessible to um, global uh, and local uh, insurance companies willing to transact on their risks with the uh, capital markets through the Vesto platform. That's about us. Uh, thank you very much. Happy to uh, meet with everybody in the, in the backstage. Uh, thank you very much for the opportunity to present ourselves. Perfect. Thank you so much, uh, Yanov. Uh, last but definitely not the least is Chiradeep Mukherjee from uh, Spark Beyond. Um, this is our uh, final presentation, following which we will then get on to the back uh, uh, to the lounge where we'll have roundtables for each uh, company. I will take you through the process of how you can interact with the startups once we finish with uh, Spark. So Chiradeep, it's uh, over to you. Could you share your right. screen? Yes, um, thanks, Mushir, for that. So I'm going to start with a, a video followed by slides. I'm happy to take a chance uh, on that. So let me do that. And here I go. In order to get the right answer, you must first ask one question. Unfortunately, the human brain is limited to more dimensionality. And we're always going back to our cognitive bias that's going to limit us. We created the AI disruption engine that allows you to take any type of data that you have, start to generate tens of millions of hypotheses, augmented with external data, the engine writes its own code, which can be hypotheses, feature discoveries, predictive models, or prescriptive optimized models. What we were able to do is to connect AI to impact, which could be business impact or social impact. Spark Beyond is, of course, for-profit organization, but at the same time, we believe we have a bigger mission and responsibility to use the incredible technology we develop to do well while doing good. All right, and uh, now I'll come back to my slides and start talking. Let me know if you're able to see my slides. Yes, we are. Please go ahead. Okay. I'll just quickly put it into uh, slide share mode. Just one second. Still visible, right? Okay. So um, uh, thanks, everyone. Um, so Spark Beyond, uh, as you saw in, in the video briefly, that's how we like to start. So we are about eight years old. Uh, we provide a portfolio of um, AI-driven problem-solving products uh, from advanced analytics to augmented research. And uh, we've got five global hubs across the globe. We serve Fortune 500 companies across 15 plus uh, sectors. Uh, we are also an exclusive analytics and research platform with McKinsey and Company and uh, our, our top 15 strategic AI partner of Microsoft globally. That's about us. Now about what Spark Beyond does. So it's an auto analytics platform uh, that basically accelerates the path from data to real world impact. Uh, the three value propositions that we have. Uh, and number one, it's an, it's an ideation machine. By that we mean the platform has the capability of testing millions and millions of hypotheses um, on, on your data in, in, a, in a matter of minutes, uh, discovering drivers that even domain experts would probably never think to ask and uh, uh, human beings will definitely uh, not be able to spot. 
um, we take it forward by auto augmenting data with um, external factors, uh, much of which is embedded into the platform itself. And this leads to a, a very distinctive way of uh, connecting dots, uh, discovering patterns and hidden insights, which are otherwise not visible or not thinkable. Uh, we are staunch believers of uh, explainable AI, which means that we are in the business of powering glass box solution as opposed to anything which is a black box. All our outcomes are explainable and, and they also have the ability to constantly adapt to an ever-changing world, especially starting last year, which has uh, completely changed how business needs to be done uh, globally. Um, in the while we are not a fintech but we work closely with uh, a variety of financial services uh, and insurance and banking clients uh, across the globe uh, as you can see we cover pretty much all business functions from risk to marketing from investments to operations customer success and all of it um, we do everything starting from a customer lifetime value to credit cards uh, uh, aml and and location of branches and atms and so on and so forth credit underwriting and all of that. Uh, the challenge is while these might uh, sound to be topics which pretty much everyone does, so the spark beyond difference is the way in which we do it. Um, and that is what uh, makes uh, the propositions that we have quite interesting. Um, in short, we are in the business of helping CMOs and CROs of uh, financial services organizations literally transform the way advanced analytics is done and we enable them to sort of solve their most challenging problems, um, whether uh, for running the business or um, uh, changing their uh, their business. And what you see here highlighted is, is, is probably a glimpse into what um, we do in terms of financial insurance industries as, as potential use cases. Uh, there's a lot more which I'll be happy to talk about later on. Now, uh, Literally working with one of the largest station banks with over 50 million customers, um, quite a recent engagement for us um, is, is the way we have transformed their business and uh, uh, literally transformed the way they, they do data science in terms of being an already matured player with a, with a fantastic data science team and, and the differentiation that Spark Beyond was able to bring into it. So not only did we sort of um, change the way the business interacts with the data science and analytics, so to say, to drive outcomes, but uh, we impacted the way they look at data in terms of prepping up for uh, a typical analytics journey. Um, but the most important outcome that we believe we are proud of is, is the fact that we enabled uh, a bunch of talented uh, analysts to focus on applying their domain knowledge uh, and, and, and generating solid impact in the business rather than trying to build the most accurate model. Happy to talk more, um, and that's about Spark Beyond. Great, thank you so much, uh, Chiradeep and all the speakers for uh, sharing about their companies. Uh, it's quite exciting. 